Hi there! So today we're going to be talking about a Kickstarter that I backed a little while ago called Drumroll. Now this is a reprint of a game from Artipia Games, or Artipia Games, uh, and it, it, it ran me maybe $60-$65. Uh, you get a lot of stuff for the goods, and we'll go through some of the kind of basic gameplay. I think it has really good bones, there's lots of great information on the internet about how to play, so I won't go into too much depth, but let's take a nice basic idea of what the game would look like. Here we go. So. Most of the worker placement will be done on this board. It depicts the different spaces you can choose, it has a track to keep turn order, and how many rounds have been played, and then just kind of a normal scoring track here. As you can see, this track ends at 50, so it's not a hugely high scoring game, um, so your points really matter a lot. Uh, it comes with a deck of investment cards, um, and a giant stack of performers, and a smaller stack of personnel. And then you get some money chits. These are trailers for your performers, some discount tokens, and a pile of resource cubes. You don't go through many of these in a game, so I'm not sure quite why they have so many. Uh, then you have your kind of personal player board. It gives you a reminder of the different types of performers, different types of resources used, and kind of houses everything. Really, this is almost unnecessary, but it's kind of nice and visual. Um, each player will receive a location for each round that will pass to the next player each turn, or each big show. You'll go to a new city, of course. Um, and each player gets three workers. So unlike a lot of res or worker placement games, uh, you will never be able to buy any more workers, so you just kind of play with what you have. So as I alluded, the game is played over three big shows. So one, two, three. And in each one, all of the performers you've earned will try their best to perform. You'll pay salaries and you'll take some victory points. So. Each big show can take up to five, or from five to seven preparation rounds. So that means getting them through rehearsals and costumes, earning up some money, selling some tickets. So five is the minimum, and after that, players will actually vote on whether or not to continue going and preparing more, or just get their big show over with. The game of drumroll takes place on the board with players taking turns allocating their three workers to the various areas. So you have resource collection over on this side. This includes costumes, instruments, rehearsal time, all kinds of things to make their performers better. You have a ticket selling track, you've got investment cards, and then you have hiring performers and personnel. So the resources that you grab have room for one worker each. So once green has allocated for the red cube, no one else can take that one. Also, only as many of these spaces can be taken as there are numbers of players playing. So if yellow's first choice was an investment card instead, green could come along and take a second cube for the round, and that would block out the last two spots. Now this is a three-player game setup, of course, with four players you'd be allowed to take four spaces here. So you have the cubes, you have a ticket selling, so each player can place their worker on this space up to twice per turn, and this moves their cube along this ticket selling track. So the first space here is going to net them $2, and then $3, and it goes on $4, $5, $3. And once they get all the way up around here to the fifth, or the, I'm sorry, the ninth space, they won't be able to sell tickets anymore until the next big show. So these will reset each round. Uh, the next space here you'll see an investment. Um, each player placing here can place up to twice, so you can have multiple players. And for each space that you mark here, you'll pay one coin and draw a card off of the investment deck. <laughs> what you see here, one of any cube or two green cubes. Uh, you have a discount in hiring a performer. You have a free yellow cube placed onto a performer, and some of them, as you can see here, are marked with a victory point, which is this kind of fancy green thing. 
Um, if you hold on to these cards till the very end of the game, you'll be able to net that one point. So it's not real great in the first couple shows, but during the third show, of course, you can make decisions like that. Uh, the extra income right here would turn any cube into five money. And so you can hold up to two cards of those in your hand at any given time. There are plenty of ways of enhancing that effect with magicians and all kinds of things. Uh, the next space I'm going to skip for just a moment, and we'll talk about personnel. So, each player may place up to one worker on the personnel purchasing. So you go through and you hire personnel. So what does that look like? That You'll have a pool of one personnel per player playing. This will reset each turn from the personnel deck. Um, they won't move if no one's purchased any, but they will get discounted each round that they're not chosen. So they have a hiring cost here in the corner. This one's costing four. He is an agent, and he turns one of any cube into a white or a yellow cube. Now, and you'll see here, there's a little hand holding up a bag, and it says one. That means during every big show, he has a salary of one. Um, this one has a hiring cost of five and an upkeep of two, but he turns one yellow cube into a green and a white cube. So he's netting you one free cube, and you can use up to one personal assistant and one agent per turn. So they can be very, very valuable. But you'll see other personal assistants can give you bonuses for every big show, gain two victory points. Um, this one enhances the effect of the city you're in. There's, there's lots of crazy different effects on here. Uh, the investment, uh, the bank representative, uh, you'll place money permanently onto this card and net victory points. So if you can spare 10 money during the game, you can net 5 victory points. So these can be very powerful. And as I said, you'll see 3 of them in a 3 player game, 4 in a 4 player game, yada yada. As I said, we get back to the performers. Performers in this game are super important. So they have 2 sides, and we'll go over kind of the anatomy of a card. So you have a card type in the corner. This one's a green one, so that means it is a kind of tamer. So this is, happens to be a tiger tamer. They have a hiring cost here in the corner, so this one costs four, and they have a performance down at the bottom. So tiger tamers require uh, one red, one white, and one yellow cube for peak performance. So as you go, let's say I've hired this man, you're going to be adding cubes to him and during the course of the game, if I've accumulated two cubes, the red and the white cube, when the big show happens, I'll get the benefit below the white cube. So I'd turn one cube into four money. Now the only way to really progress in this game is to do outstanding performances, which requires each of the three items here. Um, I could keep it on this side to turn one cube into five money, with an income of four salary each round, or during a show, if I've got an outstanding performance, what I can do is choose to throw the cubes and flip the card for its victory point value. This is a once per, for, per game. And I flip it here, I take my three victory points, and from now on, after the, the round I flip him, he's only going to cost one salary per big show. He doesn't, he no longer has to perform and I no longer have to assign cubes to him, he just stays in my tableau. So that's the most important part of this game, for the most part, is finding the right mix of these performers and their benefits, knowing when to flip them, making sure you have enough to pay all their salaries. Because if at any time you can't pay a salary, they're actually going to leave you, discard from the deck, and you'll pay their hiring cost on their way out. So it's a really hugely negative effect if you can't pay their salaries. So there's really no reason not to. Uh, especially when you consider that performers will perform before you pay their salary. So you can use their effects to gain some money if you need to right before the end of a round. So the game progresses. Everybody allocates three workers per turn. You take the effects of the cubes first, go from tickets to investments to performers to personnel. And if multiple people show up on the same space, you go from the bottom to the top. So first come, first served. That way they have a better choice. Then, at the end of every turn, you'll move the turn marker down one. You'll populate a discount token onto any performers or personnel that did not get chosen. 
And this means that hiring them will cost minus one for every discount token. The round that the personnel or performer is out and they cost zero, if no one hires them, they will be discarded and you'll get an extra fresh performer or personnel from the deck. But let's say well, this is our setup, so we need one more performer out. And you have to be very careful that there's a diversity of types of performers here. So if ever you have more than two, you're actually going to discard the last one and keep drawing until you have three different types pre presented, or two, two different ones of two, two each. Um, when the big show comes around, each player will kind of monitor the player to their left. They'll check all their performers with their cubes, see what benefits they're going to get, decide whether or not to flip them, and take any victory points as necessary. After that, you'll refresh the entire board and go on to the next big show, which means passing each round you'll have a location you're in. So this round we were in Vienna. We got extra victory points for having these types of performers. But this will now pass to the player to my left, and I will collect the player from my right, and I'll be in Athens this round, hiring Bazaar, and hopefully getting some acrobats into play. So overall I felt that Drumroll is a very worthwhile worker placement game. I like that it focuses less on grabbing more workers than it does on managing different card combinations, new ideas, trying to sneak by a couple extra victory points here and there, and large in-game bonus scoring. I do feel like the points in the game feel very important and not overblown. You're not getting 3,000 points in the game, you're getting up to 50 or 60, so that's a very nice feature. Uh, the game swings a little bit, so if a player is only seeing or drawing into early game cards, they're going to have a little trouble toward the end of the game, but if they get in-game scoring cards as their first draws, they're going to have a little trouble building an engine. So it does swing a little on whether or not you get the cards you're looking for. That being said, there's plenty of opportunities to draw cards, to manipulate how much money you have, what kind of cubes you've gotten, and mess with your opponents just enough to make it really interesting. I love that the game has three scoring rounds, and I wish there weren't so many turns, though I feel I understand why. I just think maybe the in-game conditions, the in-game prestige is a little too attainable. I, I think if they had hardwired it to having maybe four turns with a fist that's voted on, that would make it a little less easy to complete so many performers and get so many things. Uh, that being said, the game is gorgeous, which is great, and definitely has a place in that it plays pretty well at two players, it plays better at three or four. Uh, lasts about an hour. Overall, I'd say I'm pretty happy to have played it. I'll play a few more games of it, and then I'll probably end up trading it away. Uh, I don't feel that it was so unique that it needed a place in my personal game library. So we'll have to see if some more strategies come out. And I did get the mini expansion that came with the Kickstarter. So perhaps the more bizarre performers will help with that. The, the biggest downside to getting some of the Kickstarter benefits is that the rulebook is, is good, is quality made, but doesn't have additional rules for Kickstarter bonuses, so you're kind of relying on internet research every time a question comes up about a unique card or a property of a card that doesn't involve the things in the rule book. So overall, I'd say it is worth playing. I don't know if it'll be my new favorite thing, but definitely a great game. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all soon.